so hello everybody and welcome to a new live class welcome everybody as i have just said today we are going to be talking a little bit about the ross run bridge package and uh, how to use it in different ways for different uh, situations and uh, yeah this is a package that it's quite important especially uh, nowadays where uh, where we have a, a, a we have ROS 1 and ROS 2 still coexisting since ROS 2 is still in an early development stage we have to uh, use still some packages some nodes in ROS 1 so so yeah i think this is going to be a very interesting topic so yeah let's not let's not lose any more time and let's uh, jump straight into it so yeah i'm going to to right now switch to my computer screen and um, start with the live class so so yeah as always uh, i'm going to to remind it in case that there is uh, any new students in, in this live class so very important in the workshops section here we are going to see today's live class here we have it then uh, we have to click on this fork and open the class project this uh, light blue button that we have here in the uh, upper right corner and by clicking here basically what uh, what's going to happen is that uh, the project that we are going to be working with today is going to be copied automatically to your workspace to your account you are going to have it forever so in case you want to practice tomorrow you are going to have it there and uh, also it's going to open it automatically so let me click on it uh, myself so that uh, it gets copied to my workspace and uh, as you are going to see it's going to automatically open it and here in the right side you are going to have the live streaming uh, section where you can see the the video streaming you also have the chat in case you have any questions uh, any, any any doubts any problem that you experience during this live class you can just write it down here in the chat and i'm going to read it and try to help you uh, as best as i can all right so so yeah let me know so far uh, how is how is it going everything is uh, going okay have you been able to copy the project to your workspace do you have your projects opened Yes, no. Let me close all this. As you can see, uh, you are going to, to have this notebook. So you have to check that the notebook is the correct one, is the one for the live class number 129, as I have right here. So. So yeah, let me know here in the chat. Uh, everything is good. Are we are we are we good to to move on? Let's see. Okay. I'm not getting any message. I don't know if there is any any issue here in the chat or uh or maybe everything is fine, so I'm good to go. All right, all right. So let's let's keep going then. Let's keep going then. If uh, no questions, let's keep going. All right. Then the first thing we are going to do is to uh, start the simulation. So we are going to be working with a simulation. In this case, we are going to be working with a ROS one simulation. So let me open here a new web shell. Remember, in order to open uh, web shells, you have to click on this first icon here in the bottom menu. And this is going to open a, a brand new Linux shell. This is just a regular Linux shell where you can type uh, commands. And uh, yeah, so once you have this uh, shell opened here, we are going to run the following commands. First, we are going to source this simulation workspace, which is the workspace where all the simulation related packages are located. So uh, in you can copy directly directly here from the notebook and paste it into the shell so that you are going to move faster and you don't have to type uh, all the command character by character so so yeah we have to first of all source the simulation workspace uh, workspace and then run this ros launch command which is the one that is going to start the simulation ros launch your e gazebo your 3e dot launch 
So as you can see, we are going to be working with the Dewar 3E robot by Universal Robots, which is a, a manipulator robot. And uh, as you can see as well from this command, we are running it with ROS launch. So we are running uh, this simulation with ROS1, all right? Then, uh, then the goal is going to be to communicate with this ROS1 uh, simulation from ROS2. And for that, of course, we are going to use the ROS1 bridge uh, package. So, yeah, once uh, we have uh, run the command here, we can open, we can click on this uh, cube-like button. We can directly click here, and this, as you can see, this is going to open a gazebo client, which is going to allow us to visualize the simulation. All right, here, here we have it, the UR, UR3 e robot. It has a, a, a gripper mounted here, the end effector. So, so yeah, this is the initial setup we need to we need to do in order to have the simulation uh, running and ready to interact with it. So yeah, so far so good. Any questions? Any problems running the simulation? If not, I'm going to keep uh, going. Right, so yeah, so let's let's keep moving. Then, um, okay, yeah, here as always, you have in the notebook all the instructions of all the steps, how to do everything. Then um, the ROS one bridge, which is the topic of today's live class. So as I have said uh, already in the beginning of the live class, the ROS one bridge basically uh, allows the communication between nodes from ROS1 and ROS2. So we can have some uh, ROS1 nodes running and also ROS2 nodes uh, running, which by default they are not able to communicate with each other. Then we can use the ROS1 bridge to, to exchange uh, messages between ROS1 nodes and ROS2 nodes, which uh, it's very useful, especially now nowadays, as I have said also before, because of the uh, coexistence of ROS1 uh, and ROS2. So we are in a moment now where we have uh, to still work, uh, sometimes in ROS2, sometimes in ROS1. Then um, it's very interesting to, to, to know how to use the ROS1 bridge because it's going to allow us to, to do some tasks that uh, working only with ROS2, for instance, would, wouldn't be, po be possible. All right, then, then yeah, uh, for this live class, we are going to explore three different options that the ROS1 bridge provides, which is the dynamic bridge, the parameter bridge, and the action bridge. We are going to see in a moment uh, what are we going to use each one for. Uh, but uh, yes, uh, this is depending on the needs of your project, on what you are working on, you might uh, need to, to, to use this ROS1 bridge in one way or another. Right? Then we are going to see different ways, different setups in, in which we can use this ROS1 bridge package in order to exchange uh, messages from uh, between ROS1 and ROS2. All right, then uh, let's start. So, so yeah, as I have said, uh, this simulation that we have here running, the UR3E simulation, is running in ROS1. Therefore, we can directly uh, interact with it by using ROS1 commands, like, for instance, ROS topic list, right? Then we can uh, here open a new shell. You can open a new shell by clicking here in this uh, plus icon. Also, you can open uh, another window shell like this, whatever you prefer, whatever you feel more comfortable uh, working with, you can go for that. Then in my case, I'm going to open it uh, right here in the site. Then first of all, I need to source the ROS1 version I'm going to be working uh, with in this shell, which in this case is going to be uh, Noetic. So let me copy and paste the command here. Then I'm going to source ROS Noetic. And now I am ready to use ROS1 commands such as ROS topic list. This command is going to, to, to give me, to output, a list of all the currently available and running 
topic from this simulation, which as you can see, we have uh, uh, many here. Some uh, of them here related to the arm uh, control, clock, some of them related to gazebo, to the gripper as well, the states of the joints of the robot, the transforms, etc., etc. Okay, so we can get here a, a list of all the current uh, active topics that we have in this uh, UR3E simulation. Then, yeah, so then the goal from this point, which is the initial point of the life class, the goal is going to be to, to, to try to communicate with uh, some of these topics from ROS2. Then we are going to start by using the dynamic bridge. So the dynamic bridge, probably uh, most of uh, you already uh, know about it, because uh, you, I would say that it's the most commonly used one and the one that uh, most of the people uses by default. And uh, basically uh, what it does is that it breaches all the, all, the, all the topics, let's say. Okay, well, it, it, it gives us the possibility to breach all the topics. Then uh, by default, uh, this is not how it works. We are going to see it in a moment. But um, yeah, I think that rather than, than talking about it and explaining uh, about it, it's better to just use it and test it, as we like to do here in the construct. We like to, to teach uh, by doing, by practice. So let's go for it. Then, in order to use uh, the ROS1 bridge, we are going to need to source both ROS versions. ROS1, in this case here, we are sourcing Noetic, and also ROS2, in this specific order, okay? It, this is important. So the order of the sources, it's uh, important, and it can be a, a, a cause of uh, errors, all right? So we are going to always source first the ROS1 version. In this case, we are using a Noetic, and then we are going to source the ROS2 version. In this case, we are using ROS2 Foxy. So, I'm going to work in a new shell here also. Then I'm going to first source here Noetic. I'm going to source next Foxy. Okay, don't worry about these messages. They are normal. They are just uh, saying that you are changing between uh, ROS1 and ROS2 distribution. So, so you have to be aware. You have to know what you are doing. Then uh, once we have run the sources, we are ready to start the dynamic bridge. Yeah, so we are going to now run this dynamic bridge node from the ROS1 bridge packages. Okay, then let's execute this command and this is going to start the dynamic bridge and it's going to start generating all the um, connections uh, sometimes it takes some seconds in order to execute. In any case, if everything goes as expected, you should get an output similar to this one. Yeah, here we can see that it's uh, already creating some bridges for services, for some Gazebo-related services, also for this topic, Russell topic. There we go. Okay, so here I can see all this uh, all this output which is the same as in the notebook. So everything has gone uh, as expected, has gone okay. Then uh, at this point, the connection between uh, ROS2 and ROS1 has been done, all right? Then uh, now what we can do is to go to our new shell and source this shell for uh, working with ROS2. So we are going to source ROS2 Foxy then at this point we should be able to already do a ROS topic list and see the topics which are running in ROS1 from ROS2. Okay? However, however, you are going to see right now that uh, it's not the case. So we can see a couple of topics here, ROS2 topic list, the, these parameter events, uh, ROS out. We can indeed see also some services. Right, all the all the services from Gazebo that have been here, uh, Bridget, etc. We can see them uh, here. But as for the ROS2 topic, as for the topics, we can only see ROS out, which is the one 
that has been bridged and parameter events, which is uh, a default uh, ROS2 topic. So uh, we can tell we can tell that there are some topics missing, right? If, if we go back to this initial shell where we did the ROS topic list from ROS1, we can see many, many uh, more topics which are not available here from ROS1, from ROS2. So what's going on here? Well, actually uh, nothing strange is going wrong. Uh, there is uh, no error. So this is expected. Why? Well, because uh, by default, by default, the dynamic bridge, if we run it uh, like this, by default, the bridge of the topics uh, is going to be generated only when a pair of topics of publisher subscriber is found between ROS1 and ROS2, right? So if we have uh, one publisher in ROS1, let's say, and a subscriber in ROS2, then the bridge is going to be generated. If not, if this uh, pair of publisher subscriber is not found, then the bridge is not going to be uh, executed. All right? It's not going to be created. Uh, it's a better term. All right? Then, uh, for instance, we can try to do a ROS2 topic echo to one of the, of the topics provided in the ROS1 simulation, which is this joint states topic which is um, a very common topic in order to get the states of the joint of the robot. Then uh, if we try to, to read from this topic, uh, from ROS2, so which means basically to create a subscriber to this topic from ROS2, let's try it. Let's try this command uh, right now here in the shell and let's see what happens. We are going to get this uh, error. Okay, well, not an error, warning, it says, hey, topic joint states does not appear to be published yet. Could not determine the type for the passed topic. Okay, so basically it's, called, it's complaining that uh, this topic is not being uh, published in ROS2, which uh, we can tell that it's not the case, since we cannot see, see it here with a ROS2 topic list. And uh, therefore, it cannot uh, guess, it cannot determine which is the type used by this topic. All right? Then uh, we can trick uh, the system uh, here by, for instance, providing this type. Since uh, ROS2 is not able to determine the type by itself, we can help it by uh, determining uh, this type, by specifying the type of this topic by ourselves. So we can do this, for instance, with this command here. We can trigger the system. The, we can trigger the, the bridging of this topic by just adding here the type of the topic, which is this one. It's sensor messages joint state. Then uh, if we run this command like this, now the bridge is going to be generated and we are going to be able from ROS2 to read into this topic, as you can see. We can now get the information from ROS2, and also if we come here to the bridge, we are going to see a new log which says that the bridge for the uh, joint states topic, here it is, here we have it, yeah, so the bridge for the joint states topic has been created, all right, then as soon as, soon as we stop the uh, echo command, it's going to remove this bridge again, okay? This is done basically uh, for efficiency efficiency uh, issues, okay? It's not uh, efficient to have all the topics there if we are not using them, yeah? It makes quite sense. So, so the bridge is only going to be generated when we are actually really using the topic. Otherwise, it would be uh, too much information and it would consume too much resources when they are not needed. All right, then, um, so this is a way in which uh, we can use the dynamic bridge. There are uh, other options, so the dynamic bridge provides other options also. For instance, if we don't want to do this and we just want to have all the topics available, we can, let me come here back again, we can run the command adding here some uh, flags at the end. For instance, we can use this flag here. Bridge all one to two topics. Okay? 
This uh, bridge, uh, this flag, in this case, it's quite self-explanatory. So basically, what I'm telling is, hey, dynamic bridge. I want you to automatically bridge all the topics from ROS1 to ROS2. So what is going to happen if I do this? Well, let's try it. So if I run the command with this flag, what is going to happen, as you can see, is that Basically, it's going to look for all the topics in the ROS1 simulation and it's going to bridge them. So now, if I run a ROS2 topic list here from ROS2, I'm going to be able to see not all of them, but most of them. Okay? There are some uh, topics which are missing, but this is because they are part of uh, actions, for instance, etc. Alright? But um, basically, now we are able to access these topics here from ROS2. Also, now, of course, we can echo any of these topics without having to specify the type because they are already here uh, available in, in ROS2. So we can, for instance, echo the joint states topic and we are going to be able to get the messages. All right. Then uh, there are other flags uh, that you can use here for the dynamic bridge. Um, for instance, uh, you can bridge the topics instead of uh, from ROS1 to ROS2, you can do the uh, inverse from ROS2 to ROS1, etc. Um, and there are other options, I don't remember all of them right now. Let me see. Yeah, so here we can see other options, bridge all 2 to 1, 1 to 2. Bridge all topics in both directions, from uh, one from ROS one to ROS two, and also from ROS two uh, to ROS one, etc. Okay, you can uh, investigate all these options by yourself if you want after the live class. As I said before, you are going to have this project uh, in your workspace forever, so you can keep working on it uh, after this live class finishes, or tomorrow, or next week. All right, then. Yeah, so let's let's keep going. Remember, if you have any question, any comment, anything, leave it here in the chat and I will try to answer it, all right? If I don't get questions, uh, then I'm going to keep moving forward. So, yeah, let's go for it. Then, uh, as I have said, this is the most typical way of using the Rosalind Bridge by running this dynamic bridge uh, node. Then, in some cases, for instance, uh, it could be interesting to only bridge some specific topics, right? We don't want to bridge them all, but we just want to bridge uh, one topic, for instance, or uh, two topics, or four topics, etc. Okay? Then for these cases, the parameter bridge is uh, very, very helpful. So basically, the parameter bridge allows, allows you to bridge some specific topics, okay? Then we can specify the topics that we want to reach by loading them into the ROS parameter server. For instance, by using a parameter uh, YAM file, which is the example that we are going to, to run in, the, in this live class, all right? Then uh, by uh, loading these parameters into the ROS parameter server, which runs in ROS1, yeah, remember, the ROS parameter server is not available in ROS2. So we have to load them in ROS1 to the ROS parameter server in a specific format that we are going to see right now. And then we can run the parameter bridge and it's going to only bridge the topics that we have specified in the ROS parameter server. All right? So this, this can be very useful, but let's see, let's see an example of how we would do this. Then uh, for this, we are going to uh, start working in ROS1. Then we are going to create a package here in ROS1 named load params. All right. Then um, here I have ROS1, so I'm going to do it uh, uh, right here. So let's go to the Catkin workspace SRC folder here. See the Catkin workspace SRC. And then we are going to create a package here named load params. So let me paste the command here. 
And there we go. All right. Then uh, now we can uh, you can you can see all these files that uh, we have here. You can see them by using the IDE or code editor, which is this second icon that we have here. So if we click here, this is going to, to open the, the integrated development environment window, which is going to allow us to visualize our, all the workspaces and the files they, they contain in a graphical way, which is usually a more user-friendly to, to work with. So yeah, in this case, in the, in the CatKin workspace, inside the SRC folder, we are going to be able to see the package that we have just created, this load params package, all right? Then uh, next thing is to create two new folders named uh, launch and params. So we can create them uh, from here if we, if we want with mkdir, etc. Or we can, you can create them also directly here from the IDE. So right click here and new folder. I'm going to do it like this. So I'm going to create one folder which is named launch and another one which is, no, not file, but folder. New folder, params. All right, so here I have my two new folders, one named launch and the other one named params. Then uh, inside the params folder, we are going to create a new file named topics.yum. Okay, so let me create also this file here from the IDE. Inside the params folder, new file, topics.yam. There we have. As you can see, it's automatically opened uh, with uh, no content inside, so it's empty right now. Then we are going to fill this file with the following contents. I'm going to copy directly here from the notebook all this, and I'm going to paste it here into my file. Okay, we can make it a, a little bigger. And here you can see some data uh, in a specific uh, format. So we have this topics uh, parameter, which is the, the main parameter that we are going to load to the ROS parameter server, which contains here a dictionary, yeah, with all the, um, well, it contains an array of dictionaries with all the uh, topics data. So as you can see, we have to, we are specifying the topic name, for instance, joint states, then the type of message that this topic uses, which is sensor messages joint state. As you can see, we, we are specifying the uh, type of message in ROS2 format, okay? In ROS1 format, it wouldn't have this message here. So, so yeah, we specify the topic name, the type, and the queue size of this topic, okay? And we are doing this for the joint states topic and also for a second topic which is TF. We are also going to bridge the TF topic. In this case, the TF topic uses the type of message specified here, TF2 messages, TF message, and we are specifying also the queue size, right? So we have uh, the information here. So basically in this file with the data that we are providing uh, right now here, what we are going to do is to bridge these two topics, right? The joint states topic and the TF topic, we have only to specify it in this case. Joint states and TF, but we, we could specify uh, as many as we, as we, as we like, okay? So here uh, I, am just, uh, I am just specifying two, but I could specify many more, okay? By the way, I, I have not noticed that I am missing here a, a closing tag, right? Yeah, so we are missing here at the end. See? So here I have an opening um, indicator here for, for array, but I am not closing it at the end. So I need to close it, then I'm going to put it here manually. Um, there we go. Okay. All right, then, uh, yeah, so for each topic that you, that you want to, to include, you have to specify the topic name, the type, and the queue size, all right? Then uh, once uh, we have created our parameters file, specifying the topics, we can create a launch file, for instance, in order to load them. 
which we are going to name in this case load underscore params dot launch. Then uh, to this launch file, we are just uh, directly going to copy the contents also specified here in the notebook, which as you can see, it's uh, very, very simple. What we are doing here is to just load. Yeah, so we are loading as we are specifying here in the command, we are loading into the ROS parameter server the following parameter file, which we have here this topic CM, which is the one that we have just created. Okay, so with this launch file, all we are doing is to load this data into the ROS parameter server. Then, yes, yeah, so let's, let's, let's try it, let's do it. So let's come here, we are going to compile uh, the package. It's not necessary in this case, but well, we are going to compile it anyways. Right, then we are going to source in the workspace so that uh, the system is aware about this new package. And then finally, we are going to run our launch file with this command, ROS launch, load params, load params dot launch. All right. So now by running this launch file, what it has uh, done is to load these topics parameter into the ROS parameter server. So for instance, we can do a ROS param list and we are going to see that we have this parameter named topics. And if we check information about this parameter with ROS param get topics, we are going to get the information that we have just loaded in our uh, Yalm file. See, so the topic joint states with the type and the queue size and the topic TF with the type and the queue size. It's just the data that we have loaded right now. All right. Okay, then this is the first step in order to use the parameter bridge. Once we have uh, loaded this data into the topics parameter inside the ROS parameter server, now we can then run the parameter bridge. So again, we are going to uh, source first Noetic and then Foxy, okay? So I'm going to do it again here, opt ros Noetic setup bash and source opt ros Foxy setup bash. All right, so now I can run the command, which as you can see, it's similar to the one we used for the dynamic bridge. ROS to run, ROS run bridge, but instead of dynamic bridge, we are specifying the parameter bridge node. All right, then let's run this command here and see what happens. Okay, so, so yeah, we can see here again that some uh, bridges have been created and we have one bridge created for the joint states topic and another bridge created for the TF topic. All right, so everything has worked as expected. Then and now from ROS2, if we run our ROS2 topic list, what we are going to see? We are going to see the parameter events, ROS out topics and also the TF and joint states topic, which are the topics that I am specifying um, in my parameters file, all right? So you can see the differences here between the dynamic bridge and the parameter bridge. So this is uh, super useful, as you can see, in the case that we are only interested in accessing uh, some specific topics. So we don't want to use all the topics from ROS1, but only uh, some of them. So in these cases, in these use cases, it's very useful to use this parameter bridge, as you can see. All right, then of course, we are going to be able also to access the data here in the topics from ROS2, with just a ROS2 topic echo. Yeah, there we have it. Okay, so it's working as expected. So, 
yeah, so far so good. Everything is working uh, as expected. Then also we can, for instance, just to uh, do some extra checks, we can run as well here from ROS2. We can uh, start an RVS2 uh, session. Then uh, remember that in order to be able to visualize the RVS2 application, you need to come here to the graphical tools, this computer uh, looking icon. So by clicking here, we are going to be able to see the RVS2 screen and then we are going to uh, just change here the frame to base link. You need to do this. Let me put it here a bit bigger. There we go. And uh, for instance, what we can do is to add a TF uh, display. And you are going to see that you are, go you are able to visualize here the TFs of the robot. Yeah? Okay, so here we can see the TFs of the robot arm with the wrist links, upper arm, base link, etc. Okay, which basically uh, means and uh, indicates that the bridge is being done properly so that we can access the TF topic, the TF data here from uh, ROS2. Yeah, if we couldn't access, oops, sorry. If we couldn't access from ROS2 here uh, the TF topic data, we wouldn't be able to visualize the TF data as we have just done. All right? So, um, so yeah, there we go. Here we have the example of the parameter bridge uh, working. Again, you can use it for the topics you want. Uh, you can do your own test, change the configuration file here, put uh, different topics, etc., etc. Okay, I encourage you to do so, so that you can learn better how to uh, how it works, this parameter bridge, and how to properly configure it. And uh, yeah, so so let's go to the last uh, section and probably the most interesting one, which is the action bridge. So you may have noticed here that we have uh, in ROS1 that we have some actions, right? So if we run here a ROS topic list again, you're going to see that there are some uh, topics here like the arm controller, which has the cancel, feedback, goal, result, and status. Also, we have the same structure for the uh, gripper controller with the cancel, feedback, goal, result, and status. So uh, these two, the gripper controller and the R controller, are actions, all right? That's also why they uh, were not being breached by default, okay? Because these are, these are uh, action topics. And actions uh, don't work in the same way in ROS1 and ROS2. Then uh, by default, the ROS1 bridge doesn't support, doesn't provide a way of bridging an, actions, an action from ROS1 to ROS2. Okay, then if we want to do this specific thing, we have to use the action bridge. Okay, the action bridge is uh, a very interesting tool which is going to allow us to access from ROS2, to communicate from ROS2 with an action which is running in ROS1. So we can send goals, for instance, from ROS2 to an action server which is running in ROS1 like this one, or like the gripper controller, okay? Then, um, how are we going to do so? So, uh, the command in this case is a little bit more complex and it has the following structure. So the structure of, the, of, of, of this uh, command is as follows. ROS2 run ROS1 bridge, this is the same. Then we specify the action bridge and then we are going to have to specify some uh, arguments, some options here. First, we have to indicate the bridge direction. So do we want to bridge from ROS1 to ROS2 or from ROS2 to ROS1? Okay, we, we need to specify this in the command. We have to specify also the package of the ROS1 action server um, node. So which is the package that contains the action server definition? Okay. Then we are going to specify also the type 
used by this action server. And finally, we are going to specify the action name. Okay, so we need to specify these four things in order to, to, to uh, start this action bridge node. All right, then uh, for this specific example, we are going to try to bridge the gripper controller. The gripper controller is uh, this action server that we have here, and uh, is an action server that allows us to interact the gripper of the robot. So it allows us to, uh, for instance, open and close the gripper, this gripper that we have here in the end effector of the arm. So this action server allows us to control this gripper. Then uh, we are going to try to bridge this uh, action server from ROS1 to ROS2, and then we are going to try to control it from ROS2. All right? Then knowing the structure of the command, in our case, our command is going to be something like this. Okay? So ROS2 run, ROS1 bridge, action bridge. We indicate here the bridge direction. So we want to reach from ROS1 to ROS2. In this case, it's indicated like this. Then we specify the, the package which contains the action de definition, which is control messages. We specify the type used by this uh, action. And then we specify the name of the action. Okay, so this data, in case you are wondering uh, how to get it, it's very simple. So we can just come here to, 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 to ROS1 and uh, get information. So for instance, uh, ROS topic uh, info of the gripper controller, gripper command uh, goal, for instance. Yeah, so here we can see that the package which contains the type is control messages, and we can see that the type is gripper command. Yeah, this action goal is uh, always added depending on the topic. Yeah, but the name is this one without this action goal uh, suffix at the end. Yeah, so basically here we can get the uh, package which is control messages and the type of the action, which is gripper command. Yeah, as you can see, what we have specified here. All right? So we can uh, also get more information uh, from this. For instance, ROS, um, ROS message show control messages gripper command. Okay, so here we can see the structure of the message. Basically, it contains two variables, the position and the max effort. Okay, then, um, yeah, so with all this data, also, of course, the name of the action, it's always here, the name without the uh, last part, which is the specific topics, which are cancel, feedback, goal, result, and status. So getting all the name without this last part, like this, is how we are going to get the name of the action uh, server, okay? These are the, uh, all of these, I'm not, go I'm not going to deep into this because these are ROS1 uh, concepts that you can learn by your own. I, I'm going to point out to a couple of courses later in case you, you want to learn more about all this, okay? But it's not the purpose of this live class, so I'm not going to, to, to explain all this uh, with details. Then, um, yeah, so once we get the structure, of uh, the command, then we can run it, of course. So again, remember to source first the ROS1 version, then we source the ROS2 version, and then we can run the command. So I'm going to run it uh, here, where I already have the sources from the parameter bridge. So I'm going to run this command uh, directly here. There we go. Okay, so Apparently, everything uh, has gone properly. So, what now? Well, if the bridge has been created now, I should be able to see this action from ROS2, right? So, I can run the ROS2 action list command, and I should be able here to see this action. And there it is. Okay. 
Great, so apparently everything is working fine. Let's try to get some info about this action, for instance. Ross to uh, action info. Okay, we can get some information here from the from the action. We can we can get also the type by specifying uh, the T flag. The type is correct as well as you can see. Control messages, uh, action, gripper command. Okay, so apparently we have this gripper controller action available from ROS2. Then let's make the final check, which is to actually try to to communicate with this action server in order to control the gripper, right? So let me make this a bit bigger and get closer here. So uh, what I'm going to do now is to try to send a goal to this action server. So I can do this with this command here that you have already here, the, the, the structure. So you can directly copy it here from the notebook yeah, ROS2 action, send goal, we specify the name of the action, name of the uh, type, use it, and then we specify the position value and the max effort. Yeah, remember these, these two variables? Yeah, position and max effort. They are the variables of the gripper command uh, type, action interface. So uh, the max effort we can leave it to zero, and the position we are going to uh, put here 0 0.03, okay? Then with this command, we should see something like this. We should see how the gripper opens, okay? Then let's put here the simulation to, to make sure that we can see if this is working as expected. And then we are going to uh, run this command. So let me run it right now. And I should see now, if everything is working as expected, how the gripper opens, which actually it has happened. Okay. Also, we can see here all the uh, the result with the final position, reach at goal, true, and the goal finished with the status su succeeded. Okay. So what has just happened here? Just to summarize, so we have a simulation. We have this simulation here running in ROS one, right? So this gazebo simulation is running in ROS one. And we have all the ROS uh, systems running in ROS1, of course. And for instance, uh, this simulation provides this R controller uh, action server, which is going to allow you to control all the, uh, the joints of the arm, basically. And it also provides this gripper controller, which allows to control the gripper, as we have just seen. Then uh, we have used here the action bridge well, we have first used the dynamic bridge to do a general bridge of the topics. We have used then the, the parameter bridge in order to only bridge some specific topics that we have tell uh, by using a, a, a configuration file, a YAM file, we can specify which topics we want to bridge and then bridge only those topics. And then finally, in this last example, we have use the action bridge here to bridge an action, a wall action, this gripper controller action. We have bridged it to ROS2 so that we have it available here in ROS2. Then from ROS2, using ROS2 commands, we have been able to send a goal to this action server, which is running in ROS1, and control the gripper from ROS2. Okay, so do you see how powerful is this? It allows uh, many things, many things, okay? Um, so for instance, you can try now, next, you can try by yourself to bridge, instead of uh, the this gripper controller, you can try to bridge the arm controller, which is going to allow you then to control the wall arm, not only the gripper, but all the joints of the robotic arm. All right, so, um, so yeah, that's it basically. This, is, uh, this was the, the, um, everything that I wanted to explain in this live class. Then uh, just as a final note, in, order, in case you want to, to learn a little bit more, maybe there are some parts of this live class that you didn't understand from ROS1 or from ROS2, 
then you can, uh, I have left here links for the ROS basics in five days, which is basically going to, to teach you all the basics of uh, ROS, of ROS1. And you are going to find also here the link to the ROS2 basics course, which basically is going to teach you the basics of ROS2. Okay, so this way you are going to be able to work uh, with ROS1, also with ROS2, and then you can make use of the ROS1 bridge in order to, to communicate programs from both versions. All right, uh, we can see here Ryan, which says thank you. Uh, you're welcome, Ryan. Thank you, thank you for being here. I hope you have uh, enjoyed this live class and you have learned something. So... Um, so yeah, if there are no more questions, comments, then I'm going to to leave it here. Let's wait some seconds here and see if we have any other extra comment or not. Let me switch already to my computer screen, by the way. Okay, here I am. So, so yeah, I don't see any any other comments so so yeah then we are going to to leave it here thank you very much for attending attending uh, this live class as i have said at the beginning and during the live class you are going to have this project in your workspaces in your the construct account uh, forever now so you can keep working now after the live class or if you want to keep working next week next month you can come back to this uh, project and work on it and uh, yeah that's all for today uh, thank you very much i'm going to see you no i'm not going to see you next week so next week we are not going to have a live class and uh, we are going to see we are going to go back to live classes in november okay so keep this in mind next tuesday we are not going to have uh, live classes but we are going to come back with live classes on november and uh, we have a little surprise so for november uh, the live classes are going to be uh, thematic. The whole month is going to be dedicated to one thing, which we are going to reveal uh, soon. And I'm sure that you are going to love it. So, so yeah, until then, uh, thank you very much. Take care. And as always, keep pushing your Ross learning. Bye-bye.